Hello. I wish you are all well. We are moving now to another part on this particular topic, which is uh, on uh, proportion. We are now going to focus uh, on proportion, which is uh, another section that we are supposed to cover in this particular topic. Eh? And uh, we need, first of all, to understand what is a proportion. It is, uh, it is a way of uh, comparing two ratios. A proportion is a way of comparing two ratios. And uh, when we talk about a proportion, we have got two types of proportion. We have got a proportion we call direct proportion. And uh, we also have what we refer as the inverse proportion. So proportion can either be direct or inverse. A direct proportion, if we can start with that, direct proportion, it arises where increase or decrease in one quantity results to increase or decrease in the other quantity in the same ratio. If, for example, we are talking about two items here, like, for example, you want to buy cups, you want to buy the cups, and uh, these cups are being sold at different prices, eh? or the price is the same. Let us have here the price, and we have the number of cups. Like, for example, if you buy one cup, you are going to pay 20 shillings to acquire that one cup. If this price is constant, then we expect that if you, are, you buy two cups, then you are going to pay 40 bob. If you buy three, you are going to pay 60 shillings. If you buy four, you are going to pay four times 20, which is 80 shillings. And if you buy five, you are going to pay 100. Then you should be able to understand that as we increase the number of cups, the prices or the cost, which can be referred like that, the cost also increases in the same ratio. Remember here, we have increased the cups in the ratio of two is to one. Remember when we talked about the ratio, we said always when you are writing the ratio, we normally have the new versus the old. So we normally start with the new and then we write the old on this side. So if we have increased it from one to two, then the new quantity is two, that is why it is appearing first versus the old quantity, which was one. Therefore, if you increase the number of cups in the ratio of two is to one, that is from one to two, you find that the price or the cost also increases in the ratio 40 is to 20. You put 40 first and then 20. If you simplify this, you are going to find that uh, it is going to be the same as uh, two is to one. So if you increase the cups, the price also increases and it increases in the same ratio, then that kind of a proportion is referred as a direct proportion. That is a direct proportion. The other type of uh, proportion is what we refer as the inverse proportion. The inverse proportion. And with the inverse proportion, it arises uh, uh, in a case whereby increase in one quantity results into decrease in the other quantity. Increase in one results into decrease in the other one, or decrease in one quantity results into the increase of the other one. Like for example, if, uh, there, if we have uh, 120 shillings to be shared among students, we want 120 shillings and we want to share it among a number of students. So we can have this number of students and uh, amount, amount each will get. So if we have got one, 
two, three, four, and five students, how are they going to share this amount of money? Remember, we have got 120 shillings. Eh? If we have got only one student, that student will get the whole amount 120. But if we have two students, they will divide this amount by two, so each will get 60. If there are three students, each will get 120 divided by three, which is actually 40. If we have got four students, each will get 120 divided by four, which is that. And if we have got five students, each will get 120 divided by five, which is 24. One thing you should be able to notice this, as the number of students increases, the amount each will get decreases. So this is a very good example of an inverse proportion. Therefore, if we increase the students from one to two, so the ratio is two is to one, the amount each will get decreases in the ratio 60 is to 120. So you'll find that 60 is to 120 is the same as one is to two also. So you increase this one in the ratio two is to one, this one decreases in the ratio of one is to two. Such kind of a phenomenon is what we are referring as the inverse proportion. You increase one quantity, the other one goes decreasing. You decrease this from five to four to three to two to one, this one is increasing from 24 to 30 to 40 to 62 to 120. That is the inverse proportion. Let us go and do some calculations now involving this. Remember here, in inverse, we are comparing ratios. We have an example here, a car travels a distance, travels a distance of 40 kilometers using five, using five liters, using five liters of petrol. A car travels a distance of 40 kilometers using five liters of petrol. Now you are asked, how far, how far will it travel with 12 liters? How far will it travel with 12 liters? One thing you need to understand, first of all, the car was originally traveling 40 kilometers. Huh? And this 40 kilometers, it was using five liters here. Now, the liters have increased from 12, from five to 12. Huh? If the liters have increased from five to 12, then we expect this particular car to travel a longer distance. You uh, it must travel a longer distance. So the key thing there is to understand, is it going to be more distance or less distance? Because the liters have increased, the distance is also supposed to be increasing. Therefore, we need to multiply by, if it is an increase, if it is increasing this quantity, then the larger figure or the bigger figure between five and 12 should be our numerator, 12 over five. But if the distance was reducing, we could have indicated five over 12. But because it is increasing, the bigger figure here, we normally put it to be our numerator. So you'll find that this one, five will go here. It will go here eight times. Huh? Then we can multiply eight times 12. We can multiply eight times 12. You find that that particular car is supposed to cover 96 kilometers with 12 liters of petrol. It is supposed to cover 96 kilometers with 12 liters of petrol. Note this, you normally talk about the quantity that is being affected. The quantity that's being affected by this change is actually the distance. You put the initial distance, which is 40, and then you compare these two. If we increase it from five to 12, then we expect this one to increase. So we put the bigger figure to be the numerator and the smaller figure, which is five to be the denominator. And then you work out that so that now you can be able to get the new quantity. Okay, let me give another illustration. There's another illustration that I want to give you here, which says that 10 men, 
you have got 10 men working for six hours. They take 12 days to complete a job. 12 men working six hours a day. This is six hours per day. They take 12 days to complete a job. Now the question he here is how long, how long will, how long will it take? How long will it take? Eight men working 12 hours a day to complete the same number or the same job, to complete the same job. So we don't know the days here. We don't know the days and that is why or that is what we need to calculate. How long, how many days will it take eight men to finish that particular job if they are working for 12 hours per day? Because we are being asked about the days, we normally come here and take the initial number of days, which were 12. The initial number of days were 12. Then we multiply by these changes. And here we need to ask ourselves. Initially, there were 10 men, but now we have got eight men. If we reduce men from uh, 10 to eight, then we expect this job to take more days. If we reduce the men from 10 to eight, then this job will go for more days. Therefore, if it is going to be more or increase in the number of days, then we put the, the figure that is larger as the numerator and the smaller figure as the denominator. Then we multiply by, we consider now the number of hours that were being worked per day. Initially, we had six hours per day. Now they are working for 12 hours per day. Again, we ask ourselves, if uh, the number of hours are increased from six hours per day to 12 hours per day, what will be the effect on the total number of days that are, are going to be worked? You will realize that if we increase the working hours per day, then the job is taking or is supposed to take less days the job is supposed to take less days. And because it is going to take less days, this one will be our numerator. So we need to multiply by six over 12. So it is a matter of understanding, is it an increase? If it is an increase, you put the number that is bigger to be the numerator and the smaller number to be the denominator. If it is a decrease, you put the number that is smaller as the numerator and the bigger number as the denominator. If now you can work this, you will realize that, uh, let me just multiply direct, but we can simplify this. This one is the same as a half. This one can go here five times by four, three, by four, four. So we are going to have uh, four times five, which is 20, 20 divided by three, which is the same as six, six and two thirds. It is going to take six and two thirds days for that job to be completed, which is the same as six. Others will get 6.667, eh? but I've changed this. Eh? I've changed this one into fraction. So that is how we do it. We can have a last example to demonstrate that. And it says 12 tailors. 12 tailors can make uniforms for a farm in three days. 12 tailors can make uniforms for a particular company or farm for three days. How long would it take? How long would it take eight tailors? How long would it take eight tailors to make the same uniforms if they worked at the same rate? Now, the, the variable that is changing here is uh, the number of tailors. Initially, they were 12, now they are eight. And when they were 12, they were taking three days. Now that they are eight, how long will it take? So you come here because we have asked how long we are looking for the number of days. So we start with the days that the 12 were working initially, then we multiply by the change that is going to be realized as a result of uh, 
that particular uh, uh, disruption or change. Now you ask yourself, initially they were 12 tailors and they were taking three days. Now that they are eight, are they, are they going to take more days or less days? Obviously, if they are few, we expect them to take more days. And if they take more days, therefore 12, which is a bigger number becomes the numerator and eight, which is our smaller number becomes the denominator. Then we can simplify by four, two, by four, three. And then you can find that this is the same as nine over two, which is actually 4.5 days, 4.5 days. I think here I made a mistake. It was supposed to be by four, it was supposed to be two. If I was uh, actually by four is supposed to be two. Let me work out this where we have 12 times 10 times six over eight times 12. 12 and 12 to go by two, three, by two, four, by two, five, by two, two. This is the same as 15 over two, and actually it's supposed to be 7.5 days. I don't know why I made that mistake. It is supposed to be It is supposed to be actually 7.5 days. And on this end, it is supposed to be 4.5 days. So that is how it is supposed to be worked out. That is how it is supposed to be worked out. So our today's lesson will come to an end at that point. We, was, we have looked at the rates and we have also looked at the proportion. So when we meet next or uh, in the videos that I'm going to post, you will find the notes for percentages. And then we can have a, another Zoom class that we shall talk about the mixtures. And then the topic will have been concluded at that point. Thank you very much. And I, anytime we have a Zoom class, you should always purpose to come into class in time because zoom the moment i've scheduled is supposed to start at 10 it should start at 10 it's not like a, a normal class where i can do it so at that point let me conclude the class but uh, it cannot come to an end